Hello and welcome to Research Supports Future Growth. Research Supports Future Growth has been out for several years as a series of research results converted into a marketing or reader-friendly format. Only this year we're trying something new with the help of the uh, marketing team. We're doing it as a video, perhaps to give more understanding and more background. So episode number one is entitled, Spring Applied Potassium for Corn. As spring planting draws near, everyone realizes it's been a tough year for the producer and the ag suppliers as, as well. Mainly it comes down to, as most things do, money. Seems like crop prices are low and your input prices tend to be high. And so that leaves growers looking for maybe cheaper alternatives. In fact, probably a lot of growers still haven't made up their mind exactly what they're going to be doing as far as uh, nutrition inputs. So they might be looking for something cheaper, and potash is really cheap right now here in the spring. They might be thinking, well, that would be the best way and the cheapest way to feed my corn crop. But is it? We will admit that potash is a good nutrient for soil amendments. And what do we mean by a soil amendment? A soil amendment is something that's designed to increase the nutrient levels or the fertility levels of the soil. If you want to increase a large part of the soil, you put on a higher rate of, say, a, a dry type of fertilizer like muriate of potash, and that you want to increase the soil test levels throughout the zone of application. So the easiest way to apply it is to spread it uh, with a dry spreader, you know, broadcasting it over the top of the ground. And just be glad you're not this poor guy, because he's going to be there a while. But what happens to that granule? Here's a corn plant. And here's actually some uh, muriate of potash, 0062, the white potash. And as that's spread, it's going to sit up on top of the ground, because potash really does not move appreciably in the soil. And it'll take a long time to get down to the ground. So if you're in no-till, you're not really going to have much of an effect on the uh, soil test levels. With incorporation, you know, you have to make that extra trip to incorporate it, and you're going to be incorporating a few inches down into the ground. However, just because it's in the ground doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, crop's going to take it up, because the crop root, corn roots only, uh, they'll only touch about 4% of the soil at, at most. And so a lot of this granules, it will amend the soil, but it will not be feeding the plant. However, our band applied nutrients, as we always put them on, either with or near the seed, are put right in where the majority of the roots are. You make a band applied application of, say, Pro Germer Germinator or Sure-K and calibrate, and they will kind of radiate out through capillary action and occupy a zone of the soil that will feed the roots, because that's where the majority of your roots are. Another thing about spring applied potash is that it does take a while for those granules to decompose or to break down, become soluble, and uh, then you want to get all the salts out so that it can feed the plant. And that takes time. In fact, you're going to get very little potassium from that spring application actually feeding the plant. And you may have seen that we do a series of uh, grow outs, as we call them, where you can see the effects of different things, different nutrient programs on the growth of the roots. And this is one that we did a number of years ago. On the left, we put some Pro Germinator and Sure K in a one by one placement. And you can see that the roots are growing right through where that liquid fertilizer is applied. Over here on the right side, we just put a few granules of uh, DAP 18460 and potash 0060 in a two by two placement. And you can see that here seven days after planting, there are no roots growing where that nutrient was placed. Uh, now this is a band, but there's enough salts and that sort of thing in there that th it is not going to feed the, the roots until the salts are flushed out and then the roots can go over there and start taking it up. So that's what we mean that uh, a spring application of potash may not be in a position to feed the uh, plant very effectively. So it goes beyond just cost. At the North Central Research Station several years ago, we did an experiment where we were looking at the effect of spring applied potash compared to spring applied uh, liquid Sure-K. In this replicated plot experiment, we had a, a fairly low level of uh, soil test potassium, so it did call for some potassium. Uh, 
So in the first treatment, we put on an application of broadcast and incorporated 200 pounds per acre of a 0062, but no planter fertilizer at a four rep average of 217.1 bushels per acre. In the second experiment, we also, or second treatment, we also broadcast 200 pounds per acre of potash, but here we use an inferro application along with it. And that inferro application was five gallons of SureK, three gallons of Pro Germinator, and two quarts per acre of uh, Micro 500 placed in furrow. So the, the broadcast potash and the planter fertilizer had a four rep average of 235.6 bushels per acre. So you can see that that uh, liquid fertilizer, agri-liquid fertilizer, did greatly increase the yield. And in this treatment, we did not put on any potash. So it had no potash, and all we did was put on planter applied in furrow fertilizer, agri-liquid. And here it had a four rep average of 232.2 bushels per acre. So it's just a few bushels less than the full program, but you can see that it yielded nearly as high as, as the full program that had the potash in it, and much higher than the potash only. So if you're gonna amend your soil, the best time to do that is in the fall, but if you're gonna feed the plant, go ahead and use liquid and put your potash on in the fall if necessary. Thank you very much and stay tuned for episode two coming up.